Hey, what's up there guys? Roby here with the Divi Engine team with the second installment of our Divi Theme Builder tutorial series. This is the second of four, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to take this very boring looking category archive page and turning it into something a little bit more interesting that looks this amazing. Yeah, I know, it doesn't look that great. But what we're teaching you is the tools that you can utilize to compartmentalize the different areas of an archive page and make it look as amazing as you want to. But sometimes it's a little hard to figure out exactly what settings to change and what will work where. And in this tutorial topic, we're gonna to be covering different things like using dynamic data, creating templates for the archive page, and then utilizing those important offsets when you are building a page like this. So guys, why don't we go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys, so here we are in the second installment of this tutorial series on the Divi Theme Builder. Now, last week, we created this single post page layout in the Divi Theme Builder. We've got a few things going on, some author information and a bunch of different things that are of relevance to our single post layouts. Now, what we're gonna do today is we are gonna drill in a little bit deeper and we're gonna take a look at these categories. And here is the category page for beach, and that doesn't look all that fantastic, now does it? We're gonna make it look awesome, and we're gonna be basing this again off of a layout by the Divi team. Um, so, we're gonna start here in the back end of our Divi site, as we always do, and we're gonna go ahead and add a new template. I'm gonna click on Build New Template. What we do here now is we go ahead and select our archive pages. Now, the archive pages, of course, are the pages where everything of a certain taxonomy or whatever is displayed. And of course, categories is a taxonomy. So we're gonna select all category pages. We're gonna click create that template. And then we have our template created right here. Now let me zoom in a bit here as we get into this and we're gonna go and add our body and we're gonna say build a custom body. Okay, so we're gonna be building out a few different things here. We're gonna be even adding a little bit of code and I'm gonna show you how we do that. It's not too complicated. And you saw in the preview, in the beginning of this video, what we're building. So first things first, let's go ahead and add a single column row. And we're gonna want that title at the top of the page to let people know what taxonomy or what category we're busy looking at right now. And for that, we'll just add a text module. And then we'll just come down here. We're gonna delete all this stuff out of there. And then what we're gonna do is that we can go ahead and pull in the post or archive title, and then that'll automatically let us know what that is. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, you can come in here and you can say H1 and slash H1. You can actually put HTML tags in here, and then you'll have them display nicely, and I think that works for this. And you can go and do all your regular design styling here, but of course, if you do, you're gonna to have to work with the H1 tag. But that's all we're gonna put here right now. Boom, one part done. Let's add another two column row and I'm gonna go with the one third, two thirds layout. And then first we'll probably just add maybe a post slider in here. And there she is. And we're gonna to wanna to tell it that we wanna include the current page because what that's gonna do, it's gonna tell Divi that, okay, cool. I just wanna look at this category. Otherwise, you're gonna get a bunch of stuff from other categories that are not relevant to what we're looking at right now. And, you know, eh, we, can, we can put as many slides in here as we want. Let's just maybe put six posts for the time being. Um, and then we can add in a button if we wanted to. You can style that button. You can put the excerpt. Maybe if we put the excerpt, we just want 120 characters um for that so they don't get too long and then we'll also go down to the elements and of course the offset you're going to want to put to one and the reason we do that is because otherwise you're going to be looking at potentially the the first post so um over and over and it might be listed multiple times well actually on this one we won't do that but on the next ones we will we're not going to put it there and i'll show you in a second i misspoke there um, we're gonna keep the arrows, we'll keep the controls, we'll keep the read more button, but we're gonna take the meta out 
I think. Um, and then we'll use the featured image as the background. I think that's perfect. And there we go. We've got that one in there. Now, next up, we're going to be adding a blog module. And what I want to do is I'm going to put these blog modules in here or these blog posts, but we're going to use some clever CSS to move this image to the left and have the text on the right. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. Um, we're going to include for the current post. Now, here is where we're going to want to just limit this to about three different posts. And we're going to want to set the offset. And this, this is important. We're going to set the offset to one because now it's going to not show you this post here. It's going to start with the second post. And that is just a clever way we go about getting that all set up. Um, now, as far as the elements go, we can go and include or exclude certain information if we wanted to. We can take the excerpt away. We can add some extra stuff. We'll leave this as is, and um, we'll take a look at how we change things up in a bit. Um, so maybe what I want to do right now is let's quickly save this template. And let's just make sure that our beach layout there from the beginning is looking pretty good. And we also need to inspect that page so that I can show you what we're doing next. Okay, so let's come over here. We're going to refresh this. Okay, so we're making progress here. We've got beach as our category. We've got our slider there, but we definitely want these to move around. So the main thing we want is we want this image to be on the left. So we might have to float it left. So let's inspect the page. And let me pull this up here so you can see. And I, maybe I'll give you the wide angle here. There we go. And what we're looking at, we want to look at this image. So let's move this over a bit. And when I look over here, we can see the entry featured image um, right here. And you can see when you hover it, that's what we've got selected. So let's copy that class name over there. And let's come back to our uh, layout here. So let's come back in here. Okay, and then what we'll do is we're gonna add a code module here. And now it's as simple as just putting in some style tags into the code module. And then we of course want to reference that class. And then we wanna say, okay, let's make some changes here. So maybe we will put, a, give it a float position, and we'll say left, and then we'll say um, max width we're going to want to change, of course, because we want that image to be a bit smaller so everything can fit in right there. So we're going to say, let's try 150 pixels. What am I doing? There you go. And you can see things are already moving quite nicely. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of room here on the right. Um, so let's just put margin right. Uh, let's try 30 pixels and see what that does. And that, that looks pretty great. Um, it looks like we've got too much text here. Um, so let's go ahead and just limit the amount of that excerpt text. So when we come down here, let's say maybe 100. See what it does. That yep, that is much much better, and yeah, I think that's good. Maybe we'll take out this um, metadata also. So all we need to do is come take out author, take out date. We know what category it is, right? So we already know that part, so we don't need to put that in there. Um, and there, that that is good. Oh, well, we're not going to add pagination either, though, because we just want to show these first three now. Okay, that is looking fancy. Um, let's go ahead and save this now again. And I think, actually, let's do one more thing here. We wanna make sure that our code is targeting only these images. So let's maybe just add a class in here and let's call, it, let's say, um, DE left image. I mean, but you could really call this anything. Um, I'm gonna copy that and then we'll just go back to our code module over here. And now, if you can't see your code module, just go into the module view and you can easily pick that up. Um, all you got to do is precede that class designation to make it more specific. And there you go. So we can go ahead and save that up and refresh our page here on the front end. And we are making progress. Now, the reason why this formatting is a little funky is probably just some of that dummy text that I generated threw itself in there in a funky way. 
Um, so don't worry about that too much. You, of course, in a real world situation won't have that. Um, cool. So let's get back in here and let's add a little bit more stuff in. Um, let's add another row. And now we want to show all the other posts that are available, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll add another blog module. There we go. And maybe let's go visual with this and we can see that it's adding stuff in. Again, we will tell it for the current page because we only want to include for the specific page that we're or category that we're looking at. We are not going to put a limitation on the number of posts. We will keep all this stuff as is. We're going to be a little bit more liberal with that. But what we do want is an offset. Now we're going to offset it to four. Here the offset was none, and then it was one, two, and three. And then of course here it needs to be four so that we're not pulling in any of the same posts. Um, a very important detail there because it'd be a little annoying and it just won't look right if you've got the same thing over and over on the same page. Great. So let us go ahead and kind of play around with the different elements here so we can tell it, okay, yeah, we want the featured image, author, we can include a little bit more information here. That's fine with me. We'll keep the pagination. I don't really think there's anything we're going to take out of here. Um, and that's really it. So let's go ahead and save that up. Let's save it again. And now let's see what's happening on the front end. All right. So here we've got a little preview of all the posts um, that are in the in this category, but of course they're not repeated. Um, here they will be repeated though. If you look at the next one, it'll be that image. And let me guess the next one will be this image and the next one will be that image. And you see kind of why that offset is important. Um, this, but it, it's certainly looking a lot better than the other one did. Now we can go even further and we can go and create some visual elements on the page. Maybe we want to put a background pattern, right? Divi has those awesome new background pattern things that they can do. We can put in, well, definitely not doing polka dots. That looks awful. Um, maybe none of these. I actually do not like these. Uh, let's delete these out. Um, but if the patterns or the masks, I mean, the masks are stuff you can play with too. You can put that one and then you just change the color, you know, to something um, that you want to be utilizing. Uh, and you can flip them around, you can invert them, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with them. I kind of actually like this, like that. Yeah, that's not too bad, but maybe not purple, maybe the yellow. I'm digging on the yellow, man. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm going to stick with that. Um, and again, not a designer, right? But gives you an idea of what is possible with, you know, pretty fast way of doing things. Now, you are limited because by default, Divi doesn't give you too much that you can utilize. But it certainly ain't no slouch. You know, you can definitely get some stuff done in this manner. Um, let's go again and then maybe think about some other things. So we use some dynamic data. We used a tiny little bit of code to just position these images a little differently. And I already mentioned to you that you can do things like you can go to the image and you can say, okay, well, I want my images to have shadows and you can add shadows to them. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Maybe you want this image to be round in the slider. So you'll just go to the border settings and you'll add 25 pixels of rounding. And maybe you also wanted to have a shadow. Why not? There we go. It makes these things lift a little bit more off the page, but I just want to show you the flexibility that you really can make these pages look a lot different and doesn't need to be that normal, boring Divi style. Now, one thing worth noting here also, guys, is the blog module is obviously very versatile in the ways that you utilize it. Um, we used a bit of code here to change that up, but we'll go over here and you can also just go to the design tab, hit layout, and then you can switch it to a grid view if you prefer that. So let me just save that and take one final look before I bid you guys adieu. Let's take a peek and there you go. Now you've got a kind of pleasing grid layout that also saves on a little bit of scrolling space. So some users would appreciate that. And I also do realize that I did not use my cursor highlighter. My editor is going to yell at me, but I will sort it out for the next video. So guys, that is going to be it for this tutorial. Bam, guys, there you have it. That was 
the second installment of this tutorial series. A little bit of a quicker one for you, but definitely a lot of valuable information and how to utilize the Divi Theme Builder to bring your design ideas to life. So guys, definitely please like and subscribe to the channel. Definitely helps motivate us to bring great content to you and really enables us to really bring the type of stuff that you want. So those comments are very valuable. Guys, so with that, keep an eye on this channel for the next installment where we'll be covering building a custom 404 page for the Divi theme using the theme builder. Guys, this is Robbie with the Divi Engine. Thanks for being here and I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye for now.